I'm doing the 5,000 piece Pokemon puzzle. And I know nothing about Pokemon. I just like puzzles. <laughs> Oh my gosh, every single time I do a giant puzzle, it's like I forget what thousands of pieces look like. <laughs> Oh no, there's a huge freebie in here. I'm gonna take that apart because I wanna do this 5,000 piece puzzle for real. So I wanted to do this puzzle because it's a super bright and colorful 5,000 piece puzzle and I love giant puzzles. But as I said, I know nothing about Pokemon. In fact, Let's see how many Pokemon I can name. So there's Pikachu, obviously, I know that one. I'm pretty sure there's like a red dragon called Charizard. I'm gonna say that's this one. I think that's Charizard. And then I think there's like a round blue one called Bulbasaur. But there are three round blue ones in this puzzle. Are they all Bulbasaur? And? <laughs> That might be all I have. Oh my gosh, this one looks so familiar. I feel like I should know the name of this one and it's just not coming to me. I keep wanting to say Jigglypuff, but I'm like 85% sure that that's a Mario Kart character and not a Pokemon, I think. Um, I did show this to some friends of mine and they told me that this picture is just of the original 112 or something, however many there were in the original series. So uh, if you know anything about Pokemon, I'm sure you already knew that. <laughs> okay, so sorting usually takes about half an hour per thousand pieces. So I anticipate this taking about two and a half hours. I'm obviously gonna sort out the edges but also look at this, there's a very distinct texture in each section of this image. So that should be pretty easy to sort. This should be a pretty simple sort overall and a very colorful one too. Okay, I feel like this happens halfway through the sorting of every single giant puzzle. I just get tired of actually sorting and I decide to just start flipping. Okay, so I thought the sorting was gonna take me two and a half hours. It actually took me three hours and eight minutes, 
But to be fair, there are a lot of different piles that I sorted into. Also, I really thought this sorting was going to be easy. I thought this might be the one puzzle where I don't have a miscellaneous box. But of course there's a miscellaneous box. There's always a miscellaneous box. I may have been a little overconfident going into the sorting. So down here I have all of the edge pieces. Then we've got light pinks, uh, which kind of also turned into dark pinks. This texture, these uh, spirals were easily the most distinct thing to pull out. So I have those spirals that are in the background and then separately I have all of the purple pieces that are not part of that spiral background. Then we have these kind of light aqua pieces. However, these and this pile are, are very similar to each other. I think a lot of these pieces ended up in there, so I'll probably end up working on those simultaneously. Then we have our light tan and light yellow pieces. The greens, again, were very easy to sort out and I just sorted all of the green pieces together. And that's because if you look at the image, pretty much all of the green is all in this one section. There's no green in the rest of the image. So I figure I can just kind of start there once I have the edge done and just knock out this entire corner. Then we have the blue background pieces. And then we also have the other blue pieces. However, this blue background with these circles was much less distinct than the spirals. So I'm pretty sure a lot of the background pieces just got mixed in here. So again, I'll probably just kind of combine those and work on them together. And the same thing with the yellows. So this is what I was trying to do for like the background pieces, but that those colors are so similar to each other that I'm pretty sure a ton of the background pieces just ended up mixed in here. The reds I think was a little easier to differentiate. So this is the red background and then these are the red Pokemon pieces. And then I also tried to separate out the orange pieces separate from the red ones. Uh, what else? What didn't I cover? So we have the brown background. We have this kind of brown taupey color. <laughs> we have this dark grayish green color. We have some medium grays, and then I already talked about the light grays. Oh, and I think I skipped, I started pulling out these brown pieces and then also these kind of bluish gray pieces. But to be honest, by the time I got to this this few pieces left, I was getting very burnt out on the sorting. And this color is such a nothing color that it was actually kind of hard to spot and pull out. So I figured instead of driving myself crazy trying to get all of these pieces sorted up front, I would just start with the most distinct sections like the green and the blue and the purple and then as I go, I can just continue getting the rest of these sorted. So I'm not gonna lie, the sorting was kind of a struggle, but I think now that it's done, the rest of the puzzle should be relatively simple. But before I get started, I'm sure that all of you are at home screaming at me that I need to learn the names of all the different Pokemon. And yes, that's true, but I'm probably not going to learn the names of the Pokemon from today's sponsor, which is brilliant, which is the best place to learn math, computer science, and data science. <laughs> How is that for a transition? <laughs> So Brilliant have been such a huge supporter of this channel, and for good reason. If you're a puzzler, I bet that you also love to learn, and Brilliant has thousands of interactive lessons of all kinds of STEM topics, all the way up from the basics to really advanced topics, like how to terraform Mars. <laughs> I want to learn how to terraform Mars. This is perfect if you're still looking for a New Year's resolution. You can just 
Replace 15 minutes a day of mindless scrolling with interactive learning over at Brilliant, and I am sure that you will feel so much more accomplished and proud of yourself. So you can try Brilliant for free for 30 days by going to brilliant.org slash Karen Puzzles. And the first 200 of you to sign up are going to get 20% off Brilliant's annual premium subscription. We love saving money. Okay, now let's get back to the puzzle. Let's do this edge. Look at that, it's a perfect fit. So I did measure the board before I started, so I did know that it was going to fit. This is the same board that I used for the 6,000 piece sections of the life puzzle. So it's kind of interesting that a 6,000 piece Ejiga puzzle is the exact same size as a 5,000 piece Ravensburger puzzle. And yes, it is slightly over 5,000 pieces, but not by much. It took me exactly 30 minutes to do the edge. It was not hard at all. So now I'm gonna spend the rest of the morning working on the green section. Well, that only took uh, just over an hour. That was not hard at all. It's not even lunchtime yet, so I guess I can start working on the blue section. The only edge piece that I was missing is this one blue one, so I really hope that it just got sorted somewhere in here. Okay, I'm like two seconds in and I already found it. I think only one edge piece missing from a 5,000 piece puzzle is pretty good. Well, we're one week into the new year and I'm already skipping meals to puzzle. <laughs> it's about 2.30, I finally just made myself 
stop and have a sandwich. So the blue section was definitely harder than uh, the green section. This took me about three hours to put together. And you can see how I was sorting out some of these like purpley pieces and these teal pieces from all of the blue pieces. So I think that's gonna be the next thing that I put in. Okay, I'm now remembering why I usually do my giant puzzles in the summer. And that's because it is 4 p.m. and I'm completely losing the light. And this puzzle is actually kind of similar to a gradient puzzle in that there are very similar colors all over the puzzle and you need really good light to be able to tell like these pinks from these pinks from these pinks from these pinks. <laughs> now that the sun has gone down, everything kind of looks the same. So I'm going to wrap it up for the day. Also, I'm tired. I've been puzzling all day. <laughs> Guys, I had a brainstorm last night. I think I remember what this pink Pokemon is called. I'm pretty sure this is Kirby. I knew I had it rattling around up there somewhere. I finally remembered. So I think a theme of this puzzle is going to be working on the backgrounds first and then sort of filling in the actual Pokemon later. I did get most of this yarn monster done. And I got this seal done. It's so cute. <laughs> I think I'm going to call her Sealina. And then after I got those parts done, I started working on these pink pieces. This one is looking like a little origami monster. <laughs> there we go. Okay. That's my origami friend. But something that I noticed is that you actually get a little hint as to which Pokemon you're working on, even if they're made up of the same colors. And that's because the bigger Pokemon have thicker line art, and then the smaller ones have very thin line art. Oh, and then yesterday, I also, I started working on these lighter colored pieces, and so I got this little tiny bit done over in the corner. That guy has some serious eyebrows going on. So it's not even 9 a.m. yet. I have plenty of time to work on this today. So what's the plan? I think I'm gonna start with the purple section. And I actually also wanted to point out something very clever that they did, which is that they put this slight gradient on the background. So you can see how this is much lighter than it is over here. So that'll give me a lot more um, hints to figure out which pieces are gonna go where. Cause this is a pretty big part of the puzzle. After I finish that, I think I'm gonna move on to this Totoro looking Pokemon. And then we'll just kinda see where we go from there. So right now I'm gonna clear some space over here and then get started on purple.
Okay, I just took a quick lunch break and I fully burned my lunch because I was just standing here staring at the puzzle, trying to figure out my next strategy instead of watching the stove. Okay, it is day three of puzzling. It is super early. The sun is only just coming up. I can hear my neighbors outside. I can hear dogs barking outside, but that doesn't matter because I want to use every single bit of daylight that there is today because I think I might be able to finish this today. Like, I'm really impressed by how much I've gotten done in only one day of sorting and two days of puzzling. And I think as I get closer to the end, it's only gonna get easier and easier. So I actually did take a day off yesterday from working on this puzzle. I worked on it all day Sunday and all day Monday. And then Monday night, I slept for 10 hours straight. <laughs> I was so exhausted. And this puzzle really is exhausting because you don't really have large sections of any single color or texture. Like everything I've been working on is really broken up across a lot of small sections. And so that means you can never really go on autopilot, like your brain is working the entire time that you're working on this. So here's the plan. So the two big sections that I still have left are the yellow and the red. And I was looking at the red and I realized that everything in this section is basically the same two colors. So I actually think this is going to be the hardest part of the puzzle. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the yellow because there's a lot more variety in what's going on in here. And also I can fill in some of these guys, which I had left blank before. Then I figure I can basically empty out the miscellaneous box, like finish everything else that's left and then end with the red section so that for the hardest part of the puzzle, I don't have anything else cluttering up the pieces that I'm choosing from. So, okay, do you guys think I can do it? It's just about 8.30 a.m. right now. I don't wanna waste any more daylight. Let's get to it.
oh no, I stopped for lunch, I laid down on the couch, and I truly don't know if I'm gonna get up again. <laughs> Everything hurts, it's so comfy down here. <laughs> I'm thinking about that puzzle and I'm like, I see it when I close my eyes. <laughs> I don't know if I can do any more today. I think finishing it in uh, four days is still almost as impressive as finishing it in three days. That's what I'm gonna tell myself. Okay, I got bored and changed my mind. I am going to do just a little bit more today. Probably still not gonna finish it though. So for some reason, I just have not been able to get my head around these gray Pokemon. So that's this big guy here and then this one here. So that's gonna be my goal for today is just to finish this one little section. It's about 2 p.m. now, so I should have plenty of time. Oh, but if you want to see how close I'm getting to being done, these are literally all of the pieces that are left. There's nothing else over there. It's just uh, two big boards, two small boards, a tray, and then everything in there. Okay, today, for real this time, I really am going to finish the puzzle. I'm starting a little later in the day today, and by that I mean it's like 9.30, <laughs> because I know that this time it is not going to take me all day. So I'm finally gonna do this red section. So I had sat down and I basically filled in all of these torn paper edges. That's what I was doing in that last time lapse. And so now I have all of these background pieces, I have these tan pieces, these orange pieces, these red pieces, all of this is just gonna go in here. Oh man, that red section took me three and a half hours. So I've been trying to do the math and be like, could I actually have done all of that all in one day yesterday? I don't know that I could have. But anyway, I'm almost done. This is all that is left and there's just some random scattered pieces that need to be filled in. So let's finish this up. I almost feel like at the end, I'm gonna have to look at it from the side 
just to find where all the missing pieces are. <laughs> Okay, wait, I was kind of joking before, but I have one piece left. And where is it missing from? I don't see it. I don't know. <laughs> um, okay, let me look at it from the side. Where am I missing one? Uh, oh, wait, 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 I just saw it. It's right here. The very last piece. I did it! I did it! I caught them all! <laughs> Well, that was pretty much a perfect puzzle. Even if you don't know anything about Pokemon, like me, this is just so well designed where it's always challenging, but in a fun way. It's pretty much the exact same thing that I tried to do with my Karen Puzzles puzzle, where you have distinct blocks of color but then other colors just kind of scattered throughout. The quality of this puzzle is great. Like you can pick up sections, move them around. Like even as someone who has no idea who most of these characters are, this puzzle is just so well designed. I loved it so much. Um, if you wanna get one, it is available on Amazon. So I'm gonna have the link right down below. But okay, I'm sure you're all wondering, how long did it take me? My final time was 25 hours and 52 minutes. So here is how much I did every day, plus progress photos. So you can see exactly how much I got done in that time. And then here is this puzzle compared to other giant puzzles that I've done. So this one was definitely a lot faster, uh, especially compared to that Zodiac puzzle from last year. But look at this. It took me basically the exact same amount of time to do this puzzle as the 5,000 piece gradient puzzle, the version that was also printed by Ravensburger. So I guess this one is the exact same difficulty as the gradient puzzle. And even though I tape up most of my giant puzzles, I'm not gonna tape this one. Number one, because the sections do hold together well enough that I can just stack them up without tape. But number two, because I really do think I'm going to do this one again, just for fun, off camera, a little more slowly. Like I loved this one. I think I'm definitely gonna do it for a second time, maybe even a third time in my life, who knows? So let me know down in the comments, who is your favorite Pokemon? And I'll be over here just smiling and nodding like, yep. Yeah, that's a great one. Love her. Oh my gosh, such a good Pokemon. Love that one. <laughs> you have great taste. <laughs> I actually do really like this mushroom head here 
That one's very cute. Also these uh, potatoes. I did not know there were Pokemon potatoes. Uh, this one is probably my least favorite. Who knew there was a Pokemon clown? I didn't. So your secret code word for the comments will be Kirby because I was very proud of myself for remembering that. Happy puzzling and make sure you check out my 24,000 piece puzzle series if you want to see more puzzles that are about this same size. And now I'm gonna go read all the comments of everyone yelling at me because I don't know anything about Pokemon. <laughs>